Johnny, the halos are just too sweet. sweet. Hey, this B lineup looked fantastic, and we're going to compare the B lineup to last year's B lineup. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And those watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's show is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on a journey of self-discovery from wherever you are to wherever you want to be. Visit BetterHelp.com slash MLB today to get 10% off your first month. Happy Friday to you, and thank you for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. You've got two lifelong fans of the Halos here with you on Lockdown Angels, your number one daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. It's our second season here with you. And on today's show, it is Fan Mail Friday. We're taking care of your questions and getting to your comments and talking about the topics that you want to talk about here on Friday. But first, Mike, we got to recap yesterday's game. It was an early one. It started at 10 15. And fortunately, the Angels came away with the sweep in this one. Yeah, they won 11 to 7. And there was a lot of regulars that got the day off in this game, Johnny. We called it the B lineup. No Trout, no <laughs> Drury, no Wallach, no Urshela. Now, here's what's really fascinating about this team this year. If the Angels were to sit some of their regulars last season, four through nine would have been this. Stassi, <laughs> Rojas, oh, no. Mayfield, Wade. <laughs> Fletcher and Velasquez. Ugh, gross. <laughs> this year, it's Renfro, Lamb, Ward, Thais, Renhifo, and Phillips. Johnny, what a flip is of, of the switch is that, man? Like it's been a, just a completely different team. And this game was awesome to watch because it felt like a complete team doing yeah. everything right. Sacrifice fly, moving runners over. I even loved Griffin Canning responding to the four-run fourth inning. Mm -hmm. After in the bottom of the first, he gave up two runs. Really, Hunter Renfro just misread a ball and it went over his head. But <laughs> yes. he gave up those two runs. And then the Angels come right back and get four. And then Griffin comes in and gets a shutdown inning in the very next inning. Yeah. And that's what you need to do as a starting pitcher. And that's what the angels haven't done. They haven't had those shut down innings and no. the depth pieces came through. Yeah. We've given Louis Renhifo a lot of grief because of his defense, but then when he's on, he's on Johnny. He hits a three run home run. He has four RBIs. Jake lamb is the goat because he suddenly can hit. He had another RBI in this game. Matt Theis, two RBIs, Brett Phillips even had a hit his first yeah. year and an RBI. And John, there's been games like this where, the angels will give their regulars a day off. And in years past, we've gone, Oh man, this is, this is not going to be good. Yeah. And then suddenly somebody or the entire lineup just goes gangbusters and they win a game like this. And so it was great to see the backups, the depth pieces come through for the halos yesterday. I know we can laugh at last year's backup lineup B team, so to speak, but you're right. Every time we have one of these B team games where a lot of the regulars are sitting out, it seems like everybody steps up and does a really good job, even on those terrible teams of yeah. last year and the year before with yeah. Mayfield and Rojas and that sort of thing. But it was great to see these guys step up today. In fact, Louis Renhifo had a great play moving to the left of shortstop and yes. made a long throw to first base. It really saved the inning in that one. So that was incredible to see. Hey, Mike Griffin canning wins back to back games for the first time since 2021. The numbers weren't pretty, but again, like you said, he got through five, he got the win and that double did go over Hunter Renfro's head because he did misplay that. So in reality, it might be more fair to say that Griffin canning had like a three run outing rather than a, yeah. a five run outing. It could right. have you know put a stop to things. Then, Mike, everybody has a hit in this one. It was a, a hit parade all yeah. the way around. The bad, the, or I shouldn't say the bad news, 
the good news here was that Zach Neto was back. And this what guy is just a stud all the way <laughs> yeah. around. And just like if, if you're 22 years old and you made it to professional baseball, you want to play every day. And oh, that's absolutely. exactly what happened here. So apparently it was, uh, you know, it was a contusion and there was a cut on the hand and whatnot. But it was a little concerning when he uh, threw that ball to first very early on and it kind of sailed on him. But he just didn't have quite the grip. But I think. Once he threw that ball, he figured it out like, oh, I can do this. I'm good. So, he, yeah, he, it seemed like he was a little tepid with that at first. But, man, just a, a solid game for him all the way around. Now, the bad news here, Mike, <laughs> is Aaron Loop, man. Yeah. Just there, there, there's no reason for him to be on this team. In, in an no. 11 to 5 situation, the exact kind of... Hey, let's put him out there and see what happens. See if yes. we can get through it. Yes. This is this is somebody. Uh, I think it was Lisa Turk on Twitter, uh, a big a fan of ours, said, "Was that a playbook decision or a Nevin decision?" And I said, "It has to be a Nevin decision because this is the kind of situation you put a struggling guy in to take the pressure off and right. give him a chance to right. work things out." Eleven to five, a six-run lead suddenly becomes eleven to seven, and fortunately, that was the final score. Uh, and the thing is, is that the the offense for the Cardinals hasn't been bad. It's been their pitching. Right. And so for Aaron Loop to go out there and gives up two more runs, he didn't even have any inherited runners to give up. He just gave up runners of his own. But Mike, here's the thing. There's just no reason for him to remain on this team when you've got Zach Weiss and Jimmy Herget and Jose Soriano and Colton Ingram on your 40 man roster. Yeah, especially Colton Ingram. I'd love yeah. to see him come up as a lefty if it lefty if they want another lefty. But there's so many options and so many guys who are more deserving to be here. I will say that if they end up putting him through waivers to make him go down to AAA to work on things, I'm not even sure he'll get claimed at this point. So yeah, I agree. Uh, there, there's a chance that he could go down and work on stuff. But at this point, he's not contributing anything positive to this lineup and or I should say this bullpen. Jeff Fletcher did mention that, you know, they've already lost two pitchers out of the bullpen. And, and I, I understand where he's coming from. Uh, he mentioned that on Twitter. And I, I just think that there are so many guys ready to step up and are hungry for a bullpen spot. I think they have to make a move here. I just don't see how they can keep Aaron Loop on this team anymore. So I, I do the notes for the show. And so I was putting the notes together as the game was happening. And in my notes, when it was 11 to five, I put, oh, Loop is in. This is the perfect spot for him to be in. I then deleted those notes because <laughs> Aaron Loop gave up two runs. He just works against himself. He gives yeah. up really terrible walks. He gives up really terrible, timely hits to the other team. And he, he's just not confident out there. And I don't mm -mm. know what it is, man. It feels like he's falling off a cliff when he's pitching. It feels like he's going to lose his balance. I don't know if it's a balance issue for him or an extension issue that you have mentioned on this pod. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, man. Somebody mentioned on Twitter that it might just be old age. And maybe that's yeah. the case too. It seems like people have figured him out. And we've been talking about this forever and ever and ever. I don't, I don't see Lou on this team for very much longer. In fact, at, at the time of this recording, maybe he's already not on the team, right? Like yeah. it, it, as you are watching this or listening to this, because if I'm Perry Manassian, I'm making a move and I'm making a move quickly. And and I get that Jimmy Herget needs to work on some stuff. He's he's really been struggling and some people were kind of figuring him out. Gosh, put, put his glasses back on and then let him come back <laughs> up instead of doing contacts, right? Because Clark man, Ken. I'll tell you, Lou <laughs> just doesn't have it. He just doesn't have it. And and it's unfortunate, right? Like it's I hate to see a guy who's a major league ball player that just completely falls apart. It's heartbreaking to watch. Mm -hmm. But we're we're a team that's on the rise. We're we're moving up and to the right. And Loop is gonna be the guy that will sabotage that if mm -hmm. if he continues to be on this team. He's he's a wasted roster spot because yeah. he can't even come in and mop up. He can't even come during no. garbage time, whether we're up or whether we're down. Yeah. He just is completely not the guy that we signed two years ago. And I feel like it's important to, I know we group loop and Ryan to together all yeah. the time. Cause they got signed around the same time. Mike to is much better pitcher. Yes. Than he Aaron is. Loop. Yeah. <laughs> At this point. Yes. He is. Like, I know it's a little bit dicey when he comes in sometimes, but you know, the fact that he had a bit of an, a shoulder issue and got to work on that and come back up, and in the game on Wednesday night, I know that he got the first two outs quickly. He had two singles 
and then finally got the third out. That's going to happen with a right. reliever. They're going to give up hits, yeah. right? But Aaron Loop just comes in and just gives the game away. So yeah, uh, you're, and it's the uh, walks. It's the it's walks the that walks. really does him in. I yeah. mean, Brian DePere is going to give up hits, right? And Loop will give up hits, but it's it's the unearned runs. It's the it's the drawing of the walks. Mm-hmm. It's just not hitting the zone. And then when he gets when he gets up, uh, uh, maybe a ball a ball and, a, and two strikes. He, then he ends up throwing three pitches out of the zone. And yeah. so he's not even helping himself when he's no. ahead in the count. And and it just seems like he's lost his mechanics. It seems like he's lost his confidence. It just seems like he's lost everything. I think his quote at the beginning of the year, I was, I was pitching scared. It still feels like he's pitching scared. It doesn't yeah. feel like he's out there with confidence at all. And so I don't, I don't understand why he's still on this team. And I get the depth, depth, depth conversation. We have always talked about that on this show. So if Jeff Fletcher and Sam Blum and all the guys, Quite honestly, he's he's not a good piece. He just isn't a good piece, and he shouldn't be on this team very much longer. I would DFA him today if I was Perry Manassian. Yeah, and if he if he gets picked up by another team, if they wanted to move him down to AAA, and that other team is able to fix them, great. Then you've earned it because the Halos good have not been able to luck. do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so anyway, all of that to say, let's let's get that bad comment out of our head because the yep. angels are 18 and 14 Still one good. game out of first place in yep. the al west three and oh in may buddy here we go are they going undefeated uh, in no, may <laughs> no come on uh, the angels play the texas rangers who are in first place at 6 38 pacific time tonight they're back home in anaheim tyler anderson is on the mound trying to replicate that last start against the brewers where he went six and two-thirds innings and struck out seven and only gave up one earned run And the Angels are going to be vying for first place all weekend against the Texas Rangers. You can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. And breaking news, Mike, on Locked on Angels, we're on the SiriusXM app as well now. So you can catch Locked on Angels wherever you like to listen to podcasts. And now on SiriusXM, you might even hear our voices during the hometown broadcast. You're welcome. Uh, if you're watching on, <laughs> or if you're listening on the SXM app. Hey, coming up on Locked on Angels, if Taylor Ward gets back to hitting like he did last season and Zach Neto continues to play well, then who's going to lead off? We're going to talk about that and get to your questions for Fan Mail Friday in just a minute. Locked on Angels is brought to you by Rocket Money. Do you know how much your subscriptions are really costing you? Most Americans think that they're spending around $80 a month when in actuality, it's around $200 a month. So if you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, you need Rocket Money. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they just forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. Rocket Money will actually quickly and easily help you find the subscriptions that you don't want to pay for anymore, help you hit cancel, and then they'll take care of the rest. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place, automatically categorizing your expenses so that you can easily track your budget, and you can do that in real time, and you can get alerted if anything seems off. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, and they're saving an average of $720 a year. So you can start tracking and start saving money today. Check out Rocket rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB today. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. And as we uh, jump into Fan Mail Friday, we're very excited to have your questions and answer them for you. Don't forget that Locked On Everydayers who join us every single day, you're going to get a recap of the entire Ranger series over the weekend. Of course, we're going to take you into next week's games give you our analysis of what's gone down. Don't forget that tonight, 638 Pacific time, the angels and the Rangers at the big a, make sure you tune in and catch every pitch of the angels hometown broadcast on the SXM app with Sirius XM. All you got to do is search angels. Johnny, a couple questions on fan mail Friday about the leadoff spot. So let mm-hmm. me start with our buddy Torred who watches from New York, right? He's in the, that's right. He's Coast. in New York so, on YouTube, baby. Love that. And he's representing the angels out there. His question was, if Ward gets back to what he was doing last season, but Neto continues to hit well, who should lead off? And then there was a second question that said, should Rendon be hitting lead off? And Ward moved into an RBI spot, like the fifth spot behind Renfro, because Rendon's great. He's got good ABs. He's a doubles guy, a great table setter. So Johnny, what do you think about Ward leading off, Neto leading off, or Rendon leading off? Yeah, the Rendon ca- question came from Aggy Nikki on Instagram. And man, you know, you and I have actually talked about Rendon being up in the lineup because his on-base percentage and his walk percentage is so good. And 
it's strange because I know he's not hitting very hard right now. Um, and he's in the cleanup spot still. But when when Trout and Otani are on second and third, it seems like Rendon is really delivering in those situations. Yeah. And so even though he's not mashing the baseball right now, which that'll come back. It's not like it's gone. And it's not like it's just disappeared and he doesn't know how to do it anymore. He's had yeah. some hard hits that have been caught as well. Uh, Mike, I almost feel like you just kind of leave things the way that they are. I know Taylor Ward struggled in the leadoff spot. And that was kind of like, oh, shoot, there goes our leadoff guy. But then Neto comes in and we talk about how he's got a great eye at the plate and he's needs to be able to draw the walk. And then he doesn't need to draw the walk because he's hitting and getting on base. Right. Mike, his speed is incredible, too. So I almost think that the Angels kind of have their leadoff guy of the now and the future. And I kind of like Ward down in this lineup and what he brings to the sixth spot or the seventh spot that he's been hitting out of so far. But those are my thoughts. What about you? Well, Ward was at one point five for 10 in this series against the Cardinals. And then Mm -hmm. they got two more hits. So I think he was like seven for 12 in Mm -hmm. this series against the Cardinals. So his bat is heating up. Here's what you and I talked about last year when the team was great one through three and then four through nine was terrible. Mm -hmm. We talked often about, I think Taylor Ward needs to hit four, five, six, somewhere Mm. down there in an RBI spot because his bat was so good, right? And this year, we don't necessarily need to move him because we've got Renfro and Rendon and we've got a a really great solid four through nine. However, I like Ward in an RBI spot because Mm -hmm. Ward is a guy who's going to go anywhere on the field. He can spray the ball anywhere. And that's what you want. He's a contact guy. He's also a guy who will draw walks. And what I like about Neto at the top of the lineup, and you mentioned it, he takes the count really deep and he's great on base. He's Mm -hmm. really fast. I think that if they give him more permission to steal, he's going to steal. And he's got a great bat. He's already shown to have great control with his bat. And the fact that he will adjust his leg kick when there's runners on versus when there's not runners on or when he has two strikes versus when he has no strikes. I love that he's that smart as a player, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that you leave things alone. And and quite honestly, I love Rendon at number four because it does give Trout and uh, Otani more at bats at the top of the lineup. And then Rendon is not an easy out when those guys get on. That's what happened last year. Easy out after easy out once those guys get on. But it's not an easy out, even if he's not showing some power right now. The guy is drawing a walk, he's taking counts really deep, or he's getting ground balls through the infield that the infielders can't get to, and then it moves runners over, or it's knocking runners in. And so I'm with you. I would leave it alone. I love that everybody's moving up and to the right, and I think that they're trying to find the vibe of this lineup and Zach Neto at the top, I think, actually sets the table perfectly for Trout and Otani. Absolutely. Kind of on the same vein, Andre Semenis Jr. said, should Rendon move down in the lineup to five or six because the lack of power? But I feel like you kind of answered that question just with the idea that he's not an easy out. Right. And when Trout and Otani are on base, yeah, he's not hitting three run home runs, but that's why you got Hunter Renfro behind him. I think at this point, Andres, I think it's probably a good idea to just kind of leave things the way they are until they aren't and until they yeah. suck. Yeah. And a lot of what we saw last year was a lot of bad things happening with the lineup and nothing changing. And so I think that you roll with what's working until it stops working. Mike Yamaha mother one on YouTube said when Walsh gets back uh, pretty soon, if he's going to be back to playing his regular first base spot, what do we do with our He's doing a fine job at first base, been consistent Neto is our guy now It's short. Rendon stays healthy at third. Urshela has next to no experience at second base. So I don't see any room for him there. Hmm. Uh, I like what he's done offensively and defensively. I would hate to lose that consistency. I feel like we would just lose as much platooning him at first base against lefties. And then with Walsh, remember his production dropped off quite a bit last season. He's not as proven of a player as I think. Perhaps we are giving him credit for uh, Walsh's return also might mean that Renhifo doesn't have any value there. Um, he's not a defensive upgrade over anybody, and his bat's been MIA. Uh, obviously, this came in before yesterday's game. Right. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. So all this to say, uh, he's concerned about where's Urshela going to be on the diamond? Can he play 
second base. There's actually some stats here, Mike. Let's yeah. get into those. Yeah. Uh, surprisingly, Urshela has had more experience at second base than first base coming into this season. Yeah. Uh, one specific stat, 23 and two thirds innings at second base with Cleveland, uh, only two innings at first base with Cleveland in 2017, get five innings at first base with New York in 2019. Mm-hmm. And the other thing that we forget about Johnny is that Walsh can play the outfield. Yeah, and absolutely. That, that's a dynamic here that I think the Angels are going to tap into. And I think that he can maybe be somebody that fills in for Taylor Ward. I think mm-hmm. he's somebody that can go out to right field. The guy is shown to actually play well when he's in the outfield. Mm-hmm. I know that there's the, the question of his health, Johnny, and I know that he's got a lot of things that he's wrestling with. Um, I think that you have to be very careful with Jared Walsh when he comes back. I don't think that he is a full-time starter when he comes back. I think Mm. that he's going to play into the rotations of Drury, Urshela, and others when he Mm -hmm. first comes back. I think you have to be really cautious, see where his swing is at, see how he's feeling. I don't think you rush him back in. I know that the temptation will be, hey, let's rush him back in. But I think that he only adds depth to this team Mm -hmm. and will benefit this team if he's healthy and if he's mentally good and if his migraines have gone away and if he's sleeping at night, all of those things I think you have to monitor for maybe the first few weeks when he comes up. Absolutely. Hey, Steve on, uh, on Twitter, no Instagram, actually, he said, I got two questions. Uh, who goes down when Walsh comes back? I'm assuming Mm. it's lamb, but maybe also Ren Hifo. Same question with Stassi. Wallach's doing really well. I wonder if they'd lose Thice if they moved him. So who do you think, Mike? Who's going down to AAA if and when Walsh comes back? And same goes for if Stassi comes back. I think somebody trips and falls and they're like, oh, you know what? 10-day IL. <laughs> Honestly, I think that that's, that's what happens because I don't think that they want to get rid of anybody. And what I've, what I've found over the years as an Angel fan, you've seen it too, Johnny, is when we're in a situation of like, man, who's going to go down? Who's going to come up? What are they going to do? it all kind of works itself out. And Mm -hmm. so I I do think that Jake lamb might be on the chopping block. If uh, they, you know, when, when Walsh comes back, I think that that's the guy that they actually will. They'll have to DFA him because he doesn't have options. I think that he'll probably take an assignment to triple a, if nobody else picks him up, although he's been playing really well for us. But if I'm going to choose between lamb and Walsh, I'm, I'm choosing Jared Walsh, because I think he's a much better player for us. What do you think? Well, yeah, but I think the question here is Lamb and Renhifo. I think that they really want that switch hitting bat of Renhifo, even though it hasn't been fantastic. Uh, but I think he makes a good second base outfield shortstop sometimes kind of option that yeah. the Angels might be missing there. Uh, so that's kind of where my head's at. As far as Stassi, Wallach, and Thice, I don't know. I'm just going to wait to see what happens with, with the Stassi situation. Cause there is no timeline on his. It seems return. like it's getting extended, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I say, let's roll with Wallach. Let's roll with Thice until we can't, like I said, if it's not broken, Let's keep it the same for now. <laughs> Lockdown Angels is brought to you by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing and always changing. This is why you should give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash MLB. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on a journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills, how to set boundaries, empowering you to be the best version of yourself, And it isn't just for those who have suffered major trauma. It's for everybody. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to fit your schedule. You just have to fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And then if you want to switch therapists, you can do that at no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MLB today. You'll get 10% off your first month. And that again is betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on MLB. All right, getting into our last set of questions, your questions here for Fan Mail Friday. Uh, Fast Times Under the Halo on Instagram said, what do you see as the next major move, signing, trade for this team? Mike, I think that they're going to go with more in-house options before they make any big moves. I still think they have a lot of uh, guys to go to. I mean, obviously, Silseth and Zach Neto have paid off so far. Guys who were brought up from uh, the minors and terms of Neto from double a and Silseth from triple a they need bullpen help I imagine they might try Bachman out of the pen as like the next 
big move. But at this point, like I mentioned before, I think Colson Ingram, Zach Weiss, Jose Soriano, any of those guys who are waiting around for their opportunity to be part of this bullpen. Again, I think the next big move is bye bye loop at the end of the day. So those are my those are my thoughts on the next big move there. Yeah, I I saw a great stat the other day. 22% of teams' bullpens are from in-house options. And so it typically it means that teams are actually going to look in-house before they look outside of their organization. And so I think that we're going to see a Bachman. We'll probably see a Colton Ingram. I think we'll see some of those guys come mm-hmm. up. I'm not sure on the offensive side who we might see. I think that we probably could see maybe Joe Adele at some point because mm-hmm. he's been playing so well. And then Jordan Adams has been playing so well. I think maybe Trey, Trey Cabbage. Cabbage. Yep, yeah. Trey Cabbage might come up. Maybe Kyron Paris or Errol Vera, depending on where they're at. I don't think mm-hmm. we need infield help it might be if we have an injury but when the rosters expand and i think that you'll probably see more arms come in so that they can alleviate some of the pressure on this pitching staff absolutely hey max torres 900 has a question for us after chris davinsky's great performance do you think he can return to his old self mike i dug in and did some of the Research here, of course, on my favorite website, Baseball Savant. So Tell us, nerd. Stat cast numbers. Buckle up, nerds. Uh, so far, his underlying numbers, Chris Davinsky, are not as good as his all-star season in 2017. He was really good for the Astros in 2016 and 2017. However, they are better than they have been yeah. the last few years. So while the pitches uh, are, are way above the average in, terms, in 2017 in terms of movement and drop, and break back in 2017 he was way above average in that sort of category of of movement drop and break and vertical movement horizontal movement all that stuff but now the league changed and a lot of pitchers have caught up with what Davinsky was doing back then so mm-hmm. in 2023 his numbers don't jump off the page now however the stuff that he's thrown so far uh is very similar to what he was throwing back in 2017 uh, his successful years. So all in all, the angels need league average guys yeah. at best yeah. and, and league average and better. And so if, if it's not a below average guy, like they've been running out in the past, like a Mike Myers, that you keep trying over and over and over oh, again. Man. And uh, <laughs> sorry to bring that name up. Um, <laughs> if Davinsky can at least be close to what he did back then, yeah. I think he'll have success. Maybe it's not all-star success, but at least it's capable bullpen arm success. So again, his stuff now is not as good as it was in 2017, but it's also the closest to 2017 that it's been in quite some time. So I think that's encouraging. Yeah. Hey, this question is from Shelby XT on Instagram. How do you guys feel about the Angels' strength or uh, schedule strength? Johnny, here's the good news. The Angels don't have another 17-game stretch that was for the rest brutal. of the season. Yeah. A lot of games – in a row, they have a few days off, which is which is really nice. Uh, every month seems to have a balance of teams that they have beat and teams that they have been competitive with. Mm-hmm. Uh, good teams. August is probably going to be the hardest month, mm-hmm. depending on where the teams end up. Uh, August has the Braves, Mariners, Giants, Astros, Rangers, Rays, Reds, Mets and Phillies. So Mm -hmm. that could be a really difficult month right in the middle of the dog days of summer. Here's the good news. The angels are five and two against Oakland. They have Mm -hmm. six games remaining remaining. They're two and one against the Mariners with 10 games remaining. They haven't played the Astros or the Rangers yet. They're playing the Rangers tonight and they have 13 games against those two teams. So Mm -hmm. giving us a lot of opportunity to jump over the Rangers and to really push the Astros back down. And because we're not playing the AL West as much as we would in previous years, all of these games are really important. And the thing that has always sunk the angels, John is they haven't been good against the AL West. If they're good against the West, they're going to be competitive and they're going to find themselves in the wild card chase, or maybe even the AL West championship chase. Absolutely. And again, 15 wins a month will put you at 90 for the season. And that's going to, put you right in that wild card position, if not in a really good position in the AL West too. So we'll see if there's some give and take there. And what they did against the Cardinals is what they need to do against those really bad teams. Instead of doing 
two and one, they need to go three and zero oh because Absolutely. it's those three and zero oh series that moves you from ninety wins to about ninety three to ninety five mm-hmm. wins, right? Exactly, exactly. We all felt that against Kansas City and Oakland over those last two series. It was like, come on, guys, get the sweep, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> this is it. This is your chance, <laughs> Mike. Last question it comes from Marco Pagano. He said, "Guys, question for Fan Mail Friday: How do you feel about fellow AOS team?" in the Oakland A's moving to Vegas more than likely. How do you think it could affect the Angels, if in any possible way? What do you think, Mike? I think the first effect it'll have on the Angels is uh, we're not going to have to travel, what is it, eight hours to to Oakland. I know it's a flight, but we're not going to have to fly that way. We're going to fly to Vegas. And I think the biggest thing that's going to affect the Angels is there's going to be fans. There's going to be people in the stadium. And uh, I have a personal friend. His name is Lee. He lives out in Vegas. He's super excited about the A's coming out there possibly. And the the fans in Vegas show up for their sports. Their hockey team out there right now, it's packed even when they've been terrible. They haven't been terrible Mm -hmm. for very long. They've been really, really good. And so these fans show up. So I think it's going to affect the Angels in that way. They'll actually be fans in the stadium. And I know in Oakland they've had it when they've been good and they've packed that place and so i think there'll be fans in the stadium and the angels will have to play against that kind of raucous rumbling that the fans can bring to an oakland game that they really haven't seen since probably what 2019 yeah yeah you know what as far as my own feelings i think it's just a huge disservice to oakland a's fans i know that they're an aos rival but just the fact that john fisher it, it really disgusts me and as much as we get mad at Artie Marino about stuff like at least he's kept the team in Anaheim. Yeah. And even if they were to move, it was like long beach or whatever the talk was back then. It it was like, well, they're still here. They're not in a brand new state and a whole new area. I just think it's a really disservice to a big disservice to fans in the Bay area. Um, It's unfortunate Uh, as far as it affecting the angels in any way. Yeah. The grand Canyon foul territory of the Coliseum will be (laughs) no more at this new A's ballpark on the sides. out. Oh, I hated that. Yes. Uh, Anthony Rendon won't have to walk by an A's fan on his way out of the, uh, out of the game. So yeah, that's, that'll be the way that it affects the angels. But like you said, they're flying to Vegas instead of the Bay area. So that's an immediate effect and we'll see what kind of atmosphere and what kind of, you know, enthusiasm comes with that. But again, my heart goes out to Oakland A's fans. I think it just is a, a terrible situation. Um, I would hate for that to happen to us. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, for as loyal as they are to this team through the highs and the lows, it really sucks that it, it's gone come down to this for them. I wonder if the ball's going to jump out there because it's going to be warm in the middle of the summer. Possibly. Like, that's, that's a good point. Be, could be a Unless it's, uh, you know, it's a dome like uh, like Chase Field, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. The Angels play against the Rangers for the first time this season at 638 Pacific. You can catch every pitch on the Angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. All right, friends, be sure you get at us at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Keep up with us throughout the weekend as we cover the Angels and Rangers game. We'll have our post game videos up on our socials and on YouTube. Mike, what do we have on deck for Monday's show? Well, let's recap this series against the Rangers, and we're going to focus on how the Angels pitching staff did, starting with Tyler Anderson. His last start was really great, John, and he had a season high seven Ks. Maybe he's found it again, and so he actually can get us off to a great start. I feel like the Angels need game one. Those mm-hmm. series that they've won, they've had to win back to back games. If they can get game one it feels like the momentum is on their side and after winning three in a row now four in a row Mike Trout said after that game when he they hit the home run and the ninth inning to come back he's like we got to pick up this momentum for Mm -hmm. tomorrow and they did that in that game and I think that they have to carry that momentum into Anaheim tonight and so we're going to talk all about that on Locked on Angels on Monday and we're missing a Jacob deGrom start his spot is going to be taken up probably by Dane Dunning if that's uh, who it might be. That was the I'm name saying. they threw out there. Yeah. yeah as of this yeah. recording, they haven't mentioned who they're, who's going to be starting yet. <laughs> Not that I want anybody to get hurt, but, uh, Ah, oh, gee, we missed. That's nah, a shame. We missed. They, <laughs> we missed Degrom. Darn it, they would darn say it, they're missing Shohei, so they're probably yeah. like, "Nah, that's a shame." <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, friends. We hope that you enjoy your weekend, and we'll be back for you here on Monday. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. That's gonna do it for this episode of Locked On Angels. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday.